Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm going to be painting Santa's dropping in and I'm going to be sipping on some eggnog and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you can find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, Mars black, deep yellow, burnt umber, which I will call brown, and fire red. And of course, you can switch up those colors too if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I will be using for some drawing later, and I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, I have a number 12 round synthetic brush, and I have a number one round synthetic brush, and I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process, and of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that you can find in the video description. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same type of paint and the brushes and the chalk and all the good stuff in the middle. So that's there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm using are blue, brown, black, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a dark blue type of color and I'm gonna have it really dark up at the top and then it's gonna fade down to a little bit lighter down at the bottom. So I've magically pre-mixed my blue so you can see where I am headed. This is about the color that I'm going for in through here. So how I got to that, I first separated out some of my blue over here because I'm gonna to wanna to use some of that blue later for the eyes. So I wanna preserve some of my cobalt blue for later. And then what I did was I took a little bit of brown and a touch of black, not much at all. And then let me just turn my palette so we can see it better. And then I started spinning it around in my blue paint. So what this is gonna do is it's in essence gonna take that vibrancy out of the cobalt blue and give you a more soft, muted, neutral type of blue. The cobalt blue tends to be very, very vibrant. And what I'm doing is I'm just bringing it into a more natural, neutral type of place by adding a touch of the brown. I'm gonna add just a teeny tiny bit more so it darkens it just a little bit more and a touch of black. And then what I do, once I've got it in the tone that I want, I can add a teeny tiny dot of white paint. This is gonna help with the opacity of it. So I didn't add much, just a teeny tiny bit, so my paint is has a good opacity in it. I didn't do it to necessarily make my color lighter. I just did it so it's not so see-through and or streaky. So once I've got that color, that's about where I'm headed with mine, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the top of my canvas I'm gonna be painting in a left to right type of brush stroke, and I'm going for a really nice, good coverage. You might find that once you do this that you wanna do a second coat on it, but I think I might be able to get away with one coat because I'm using a good amount of paint and I'm using these nice, long, continuous brush strokes. 
I'm gonna bring this darker blue about halfway down my canvas. And then once I get down about halfway, I will start adding a little bit of white to the equation. So my background gets lighter and lighter as it gets down towards the bottom. I don't need it to go super duper light, um, but I want it to have the illusion that maybe down below is closer to the earth and up top is closer to the sky. So by giving it this little bit of a gradient along the background, it will provide the, the viewer the, that information. So right now I'm gonna pick up my blue plus a, a little bit of white, it's not getting on my brush here, there we go, a little bit of white, so almost half, half and half, and then I'm gonna put it on here. And then what I do is I just kind of go back up into the previous section and then just come get come back down so what that does is that'll provide me with kind of a natural on the fly type of blend I just picked up more white in my equation and I'm gonna get it to go a little bit lighter as it comes down in through um, the bottom of the canvas I think that's a little bit too light so I'm gonna add back just a touch of that blue just so it doesn't go too too light on me I do want to have it a little bit lighter but I don't necessarily want it to go you know a terribly different than the um, background just enough to give me a little bit of a the insinuation that we're coming that we're coming down to earth down and through here and then I'm gonna finish it up and then I may let mine dry for a minute see if I want to add another layer on it just to get it a little bit on the smoother side or if there's any streakiness that you want to take care of you could certainly handle that with a second coat and then once you feel like you've got yours all nice and done we are going to be utilizing our piece of chalk for the next step. So you can just put your large brush away, take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline for a reindeer and an outline for Santa. I'm gonna be using my chalk. I do recommend that you make sure that your canvas is dry for this step. So this is that time where you get to take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer, get it dry that way. So how I'm gonna guide you through this is I'm going to be giving you some markers. We're gonna connect those markers with some basic shapes. We're not going for anything that's fine-tuned, detailed. We just need some basic shapes that we can color in with a base coat for these two um, cute characters. So we're gonna start with our reindeer first. I'm having my reindeer on the light side of, um, of the background, so this way he looks like he's closer to the ground. I'm gonna start with a circular shape for the head. So I'm gonna give you a couple of, of markers as to where to start it and we'll go around. So I'm gonna be up about a third of the way up my canvas. So if this is about halfway up the canvas and We'll say this is about halfway, this is about quarter way. I'm somewhere about in the middle of those two. That's about the height of my head. And then I'm gonna be about halfway between here or maybe halfway to a third of the way between here and the edge of my canvas for the top of my head. So somewhere in this vicinity is where I'm gonna have the top of my circle for my head. And then I'm gonna come all the way down to the bottom and I'm about maybe an inch away from the bottom of my canvas or half of an inch to an inch away from the bottom, right in through there. I'm gonna give myself about three to three and a half inches on either side. So about here and here. So that'll give you the same width as the same height. And then I'm gonna connect all of those with a circular type of shape. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle, just something that's gonna give us a good um, a good shape for the head. You can see mine is not perfectly circle. It's a it's a cartoon reindeer, so it doesn't have to be perfectly circle. But this is where I'm going to be starting mine. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a little bit of a neck. So my neck, I'm just going to kind of bring down in through this, give myself a little couple of kickouts in through there. Then I'm going to give myself a nose, which is going to be a little bit off to the right of the center of the head. So I'm going to put my nose somewhere in this vicinity. It's just a circular type of shape. Something like that will give me my nose shape. And then I'm going to give myself the shape for the front part of the muzzle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come about halfway up or down my circle. And then I'm going to give myself this little bump out. It's going to cross out past my circle. It's gonna kind of ride along the bottom of my circle and then come back up about halfway up the other side of the, um, of the nose. I'm gonna then 
take my medium brush and put a little water on it because I want to erase this line in through here. Because I want to, um, I've got to put the mouth in through there, so I just want to make sure that that line is gone so I don't confuse myself. And then I'm going to give myself an open kind of mouth that looks something like this. And of course, yours doesn't have to be exactly like mine, just I'm just having mine got a cute, fun, open expression. I'm going to give myself a couple of curved um, shapes for my eyes, so I go about almost halfway up that nose and then just give myself a little curved line that ends up in the middle of those and then I'll come about an inch of the way from away from that to the left and give myself another curved line that ends up a little bit in the cheek so it ends up in a similar spot on this side. Now what I'm going to do is going to give myself a couple of ears and as you can see we've tilted the head a little bit so I've got it a little bit at the side so I'm going to have this first ear on the right side. If this is the top center of your head, you're going to go about an inch, inch and a half to the right of that. Make yourself a mark. Then go about halfway between there and the, um, the cheek in through here. Make yourself another mark. And then I've got the tip of this ear, I would say somewhere in this vicinity. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect those with this almost like a teardrop type of a shape. And I'll do the same thing on the left hand side of the head, but again, my head's crooked, so I'm gonna put this, if this is um, kind of directly on the side of the eye, so too would this one be. So I'm somewhere in this vicinity for the top of it, and I would say I'm right about, come down about an inch, inch and a half for the bottom, and then come out to the left, I would say maybe about three, three and a half inches, and give myself that shape in through there. Then I'm going to put on some antlers. So for the antlers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start them right about here and here. We'll make them wider when we go to paint them in, but right now I'm just going to give myself a basic structure that I'll be able to um, that I'll be able to paint in later. And these don't have to be exactly as mine. Mine are just going to be these really fun kind of whimsical type of. Um, type of antlers, but you could certainly have yours whatever way that you want to. Maybe this one will come out like this, and then maybe we've got this one coming up in this direction. And of course, you can have as many little points coming off of your antlers as you want. Maybe I'll have a little one coming up in through here. And then once you've got that done, what we're going to end up doing is flipping our canvas the opposing way. So just flip it upside down because now what we're going to do is we're going to draw the outline for our Santa Claus. And it's much easier when you have it <laughs> going the, the way that you're going to be looking at it because otherwise it's a, it makes it difficult to go upside down in your head. So just flip your canvas upside down and, and your process will be much easier. So what I'm going to do for him is I'm going, to, I'm going to put the hat on first and then we'll build the face around it. So the hat will kind of anchor me and make sure that I don't make the head too, too high. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find myself kind of, let me just center this so you guys can see it centered. So if this is about half or the middle of my canvas, I'm going to come down, I would say maybe about four inches, somewhere in this vicinity is going to be the bottom rim of my hat. I'm going to then go up from here, maybe about an inch, and that'll be about the top part of my hat. The width at my, um, the biggest rim on my hat, I'm going to have it I would say maybe about three to four inches from the right side and you can come up from here just a little bit and then do the same thing over on the left hand side. So that gives you the width and the height of the hat and then what I'll do is I'm going to I'm going to draw my rim first. So I'm going to have this kind of coming down and I want it to be kind of ripply so it really just looks like it's you know nice and fluffy and it's got a lot of wiggle to it and we'll have some good um, dimension on it as we're building this hat. And then on the top, I want this to kind of look like the pom-pom part of the hat is kind of falling. Right now it'll look like it's going up in the air, but it'll look like it's falling in a minute. So I'm going to take this and just kind of give myself maybe like a little bump in through here and then just get this to kind of come down in through here. And then from here, I'm just going to give this this little piece that's going to pop up here. And my pom pom is going to go right about in through here. So again, I can take my medium brush with a little bit of water on it and erase this line 
in through here. So that'll just make sure that as I'm painting it, I know that that's the pom-pom and the antler will be going behind it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down from here about halfway between here and the bottom of my canvas. So right about here is where I'm gonna make myself a little bit of a marker. That's gonna be the bottom part of the nose where it meets the beard. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come inside from these corners. I would say about a, a half of an inch to an inch. Give yourself a couple of little markers. And then you'll come in just a little bit further. Give yourself another little marker. So what we're doing is in essence um, separating out where the hair is gonna go versus the face. And then what I'm gonna do, from this little marker in through here, I'm gonna give myself one, two little bumps, one, two little bumps, and then I'm gonna connect this inside mark to here with a curved line, so something like that. So we just separated out our face. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna separate out my hair. So you can really have this as fun as you want and just get it to cascade down the sides. I'm gonna do the same thing over in through here. Just get this to cascade down the side. We're gonna do flipped hair up in a little while, but this will just get us started. Then I want to get my eyes in place because we're going to be doing a base coat for the eyes. And in order for me to do that, I've got to put my nose in place. So I'm going to put my nose is going to have like three little bumps like that. And then I'm going to do two little cheek marks. So where um, the cheeks are going to meet the bottom part of the eye, something like that. And then I will put two circles on for the eyes or almost full cir circles, something like that. And like that, and then that, oh actually, yeah, that's all I'm gonna do for the outline on this. We are, um, I, I guess I could put the mouth area on too. So I'm gonna come down in through here and just give myself a little curve like that, and then just a little open part in through there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna be using our medium brush for the next step, so make any adjustments that you want, put your chalk away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint our base coats for our reindeer and Santa. So you've probably noticed I flipped mine back in the correct direction, so you could do the same if you'd like to. So I'm using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using uh, brown, red, black, white, yellow, so all of my colors except for blue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this little guy in through here. I'm gonna start with his eyes. I'm just gonna be doing a, a, a coat of black paint on the eyes and in the mouth. So you don't have to worry about any of these um, areas being perfectly painted because we are going to be doing a second coat in essence on everything. So if, oh, that eye just grew a little bit. Um, so if they grow or if they, um, if they don't get painted perfectly, it's okay because as we, as we add the other details on top of it, it's gonna be totally fine. You'll be able to make any little adjustments that you want. I'm doing the mouth black also. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm also gonna do a little bit of the inside of the ears black too. I didn't, um, outline them just because I like to have a kind of a, a loose, when I'm doing fur, I'll just kind of loosely add um, that with some, some extra fluffy edges to it. So just a little bit of black inside those ears so they look like they're going in deep. And then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna be applying brown paint to where I want the fur to go. So I just have brown paint on my brush. So this is gonna be this bottom area. So this little section down in through here, and you're probably gonna be able to see through it and see some of the um, blue behind it. Don't worry about that. Again, we're gonna have all kinds of stuff that's gonna, um, that's gonna cover that. The top part of the head, I'm gonna actually just kind of bring some of these little pieces out. We'll, we'll do more to that in, to that later, but right now just gonna kind of get that little um, fluffy part started. But when I go into the rest of the face, I'm not really concerned about perfect strokes or anything like that because, I, like I said, everything's gonna have a second coat on it. This is just give, giving us a nice base that we'll be able to build upon um, later. 
So I'm doing this to all the areas on this little guy that I feel that are gonna have fur. So that's gonna be the face and the exterior part of the ears. I just want a little extra into that eye, but again, no worries. We can just work through that as we add the other paint. I'm gonna go ahead and do the little ears. Um, I do want this to look kind of fluffy. So as I'm doing this, I'm not using really firm edges to it. Like I'm, I'm not concerned about the edges being clean it's because I do want it to look like it's kind of fluffy fur. So as I'm going along these edges, I'm just kind of wisping in this brown paint in through here. And if, it, if I still see some of my chalk mark after I'm done with this step, that's okay too. So the next areas that I'm gonna do is the muzzle and the antlers. I'm gonna be using brown and white on my brush at the same time. So not a lot of white, just a little bit of white, which will make these areas look a little bit lighter than the fur itself. And again, we'll be adding additional information onto them in a little bit, but this will just give us the base coat and it'll make it look a little bit lighter than the fur itself. So brown plus a little bit of white on my brush is how the, col the color is being created on here. And if you have some dark spots and some light spots that look like it's not totally blended, that's great. That's what will make it look uniquely yours and more kind of realistic as far as cartoon reindeers go. <laughs> and then again, just brown and white on my brush to give myself the uh, antlers and you can have your antlers wide. I'm pushing my brush a little bit wider so my width of them is a little bit wider than the um, chalk mark that I made initially. You can have them going really curved. You can have them going, you know, one side of the, the antlers can look different than the other side, which is clearly what mine are doing. Um, you can make yours again look different than mine. It's totally up to you. I skipped my um, ball from the hat and I'm just working my way up into this one up and through here so it makes it look like it would be the opposing side of that antler. Then I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to color the nose with red. So wash and dry my brush. I'm just picking up red paint to get this nose on here because this is meant to be um, a representation of Rudolph and Rudolph has a big red nose. <laughs> so we've got to represent his shiny nose so he can help Santa find wherever it is that Santa is headed for in this painting of ours. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip my painting back over the other way. So just flip it this way. I still have red paint on my brush, so I'm gonna utilize that to paint in the red part of the hat. And you're gonna notice because our background is darker, on this side of the canvas that this red paint will end up being darker on this side as opposed to um, the side where Rudolph is because we have a darker base underneath it. So if that happens to you, just know that's okay. We've planned for that and we're just gonna roll with it and let it all work out. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna start on this hat. I got the paint on there, but then I'm just gonna kind of dot my brush on that wet paint so I can have a little bit of texture um, up starting to appear in this hat so it looks nice and fluffy and like it's gonna really keep his head warm. And then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush because I need to paint in the other areas of my, of my Santa. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create myself a skin color for the area in the face. So I've pre-mixed a skin color so you can see kind of where I'm headed. But how I got there was I used a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red, not much red, the red can really take over, a touch of brown and a little bit of white. And then I just kind of spin it together. Maybe I need a little bit more red in here just so we can I was a little bit too cautious there. And then I just kind of keep spinning it together until I get a nice tone that I feel is going to work well. We will definitely have additional layers on this skin, but right now we're just going for something that is going to be a nice base coat. So something like that is working for me. So I'm going to just load my brush with that skin color. And you can utilize your own skin color as a 
um, as a guide or you could make it more pink or more brown or more of a lighter color or a dark color, whatever works for you. I'm going to bring this right up to the hat and right to my chalk mark for my eyes. And when I get to my nose, because my nose is going to be the same color or a similar color as well as my cheeks, I'm going to leave just an itty bitty bit of that chalk mark visible so I can in my own painterly head identify those edges when I go to do that other information because we're going to be doing little highlights and shadows and stuff to make sure that we can see the nose and the cheeks so I'm just going to leave myself a little bit of that um, chalk mark showing so when we do go to do those other layers on top of it we will have that information clearly identified for us and then I'm going to bring this and if you don't if you cover it by accident don't worry about it well I will I will guide you through the um, the second layer and making this all into looking nice and special form and then I'm going to wash and dry my brush because we're going to put um, a layer on the beard and we need to put a little area in this mouth and through here so I'm washing and drying my brush and I'm going to put black and brown paint on my brush. This is going to be the interior of the mouth. So this is black and brown. I mean, just kind of get bringing it right to my right to my chalk mark. He's going to have some uh, some nice Santa lips on there in a little bit, but this will just kind of get me going right down to that mark. Then I'm going to reload my brush with just black. I'm going to color in his eyes with just black, similarly to how we did the reindeer. So this way, this will give us a nice a nice base to start, and we'll be able to put the the bright sparkles and the big blue part of his eye right on top of here. So just black is how I'm going to start the eyes. And if you can get them pretty similar in size from one to the other, that's great. But if they are if one is a little bit bigger or smaller than the other, that's okay. I know my eyes are are not equally the same size, but if you can get them to be similar, that would be great. And then I'm going to, without washing my brush, I'm going to make myself a, a light to medium gray for the rest of the areas. So I didn't wash my brush. I'm going to just take some of my dirty white and my dirty brush and spin it together, maybe a little bit more black. I'm just making myself like a medium to light gray color that I'm going to use as the base color for my white fluffy pieces on my hat and my beard. So this is about the color that I'm going for right in through here. It's just a light to medium gray and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the base coat for my fluffy part up in through here. I'm going to dot it so this way it has these fluffy edges to it. We'll put white on it later but right now this is just going to get us this base coat. I'm going to do the same thing for my hat, the, the rim to my hat. So just kind of dotting this in through here. I'm going to just for this red part, I'm going to just go left to right for a second here so I don't get it too messy. There we go. And then I'm just going to kind of dot it along the edge like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing along the edge in through here. And then the same thing as I go down where it's going to meet his face. And if yours doesn't look fluffy yet, don't worry about it because, again, we'll be putting the lighter color on top of it, which is going to give it more dimension as we proceed through the process and then the rest is just his beard so this is going to be just that gray color the um I've got two areas in through here this is going to be like his mustache you can at this point you can certainly start the process of where the direction you want in the um in the beard but uh, and the mustache but trust me when I tell you we will be putting all that information on when we add the highlights and the shadows of the of the beard but this will just get it give us that nice um, base that we're looking for I'm going to bring it all the way to the edges and I'm just kind of bringing it in the direction that I feel it's going to it's going to fall and then I'm going to give out a couple of little flick pieces that are going to come out the sides again maybe just leave yourself a little bit of information as the um, beard is meeting the the mustache portion of it but if you don't 
get that delineation now don't worry about it and I'm just kind of bringing this down not terribly concerned if it's a full coat or not just got that a little in his mouth which is totally fine um, but I'm just really looking to start the process we will like I said put lots of additional layers on top which will make it look wavy and have more more information involved but right now I'm going to just pick up a little bit more of that gray and give myself a couple of pieces that are going to kick out which is going to give the insinuation that he's upside down <laughs> which you'll be able to see that in a little bit more as well as we go through the process I'm going to bring a couple of pieces up in this direction to make it look like he's you know again upside down <laughs> maybe he's you know hanging off the side of a house or the the snow sled or something like that but you can certainly kind of imagine yours to be whatever way you want and then we're going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can put the medium brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the or finish the face of our reindeer i'm going to be using my small brush the colors i'm using are blue white red brown and probably that skin color that we created that light tan so how i'm going to do this i'm going to start with my eyes i'm going to start with white paint on my brush and i want these eyes to be looking way up there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the white part of the eyes down at the bottom so on this right eye in through here, I'm going to start a little bit up from my cheek in through here, and then I'm just going to bring it in a big curved line up in through there, and then just make sure this looks like it belongs together, and just painting this whole bottom section in with white paint, bringing it right to the edge of my nose and the edge of my cheek in through there. I'll do the same thing on the left hand side. You could, I suppose, leave a tiny bit of a black outline around the edge of the eye. That would totally work too. This one is at a little bit different of an angle, so I'm going to start this white section right about here, a little bit above the nose, and then on this left hand side it's going to go up about as much as it did on the right hand side. So somewhere way up in through here is where it's going to travel up to, and I'm going to just kind of dip it down in through here and make it kind of meet this one right in through here. So I've got a little, a little sliver. Maybe bring this down just a little bit more. There we go. A little sliver. You just want it to look like it naturally curves from one side to the other. And then just paint this bottom part in through here with my white paint. And then what I'm going to do, without washing my brush, I'm going to pick up white and my cobalt blue so not the pre-mixed stuff i'm going to use the the white or the blue blue the cobalt blue plus white on my brush and give myself the colored part of the eye so you can make this as large or as small as you want i'm going to have it kind of coming up a little bit higher than the um then the white part, I just put a little bit more blue on my brush so we can see that it's blue. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to give it a big curve in through here. This one's going to curve almost in front of the nose a little bit like this. And then just kind of give this big, beautiful blue part to the eye. Very curious that he is and trying to tell Santa that to come down this way. <laughs> so you, you might picture him to be saying something else, but I'm like, get down here. <laughs> the party's down here, not up there. And then I'm going to do the same thing over on this eye. So just bring this up somewhere in through here. And you might find that if you, if you're doing this and you're like, Oh, I just did too much. Just give it a minute. Let it dry. You can always add the black back on top of it, or you can always add more lightness to it. So whatever works for you is totally fine. And then once I've got that in there, what I'm going to do, and this might dry a little bit darker than you had anticipated, so you might end up just kind of adding a little bit more lightness as it dries. And then what I'll do is I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel, pick up a little bit of white paint, give myself these beautiful little sparkles in the eye. So at the top, I start at the top, and I'm just going to give myself a little swipe down to the bottom right, something like that. I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to tackle this nose 
So what I'm going to do for the nose is I'm going to put red with a touch of white on my brush to start. This is going to give me my highlighted part up at the top of the nose to tell me that that's the part that's sticking out the most. And then I'm just going to kind of get it to blend out. Now I'm going to pick up some red paint and get this all to blend in with one another. As it's drying, I can just kind of work them into each other with a light touch on my brush. And then I'll just um, paint the rest of the nose with the remnants that are on my brush and add some more red to it in a second. But I just want to get this to blend in a little bit. I'm going to wipe my brush off just so I can access more control on my brush and that works out for me. And of course, if you're doing this and the, and the blend doesn't happen exactly the way that you want it, just let it dry and come back and add more to it. The beautiful part about paint, especially acrylic paint, is we can just keep layering it until, until it works out the way that we had anticipated it to go. So I'm just going to kind of keep adding to this, maybe put a little bit more of that red color up in through here so it's not too, too white. And then I'll just kind of see how that dries. And if I want to tweak it once it dries a little bit, I certainly will. But that's looking, that's looking pretty good to me. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush. And I'm going to move on to the rest of the face in through here. All these little details around the eyes and stuff like that, we'll hit that when we finish the fur on the face what i want to do is just kind of give it a second coat i want the top to be a little bit lighter and the bottom to be a little bit darker so this is where i'm going to access that skin color that we used for santa claus so i'm going to use some of that skin color as my lighter color up towards the top and what i'm going to do is just kind of get it to blend down into the darker area down at the bottom so this doesn't have to be anything perfect just something that's going to let the viewer know that maybe this this part of the the cute reindeer's got a little bit of shape to the face you can always pick up a little bit of brown like if I want a little bit of a shadow by the um, nose I just picked up a little bit of brown just to get these to blend in and your base coat was brown and white so anytime you feel that you need a little bit of blending action those are the colors that you want to dip back into so I'm picking up some more of the um, skin color to get this other section of the face to be a little bit lighter and have more volume to it especially down by this mouth and just getting it to kind of gently blend into the um, the edge as it's meeting the mouth itself too. And then as I work my way over towards this left hand side, I want this to kind of get a little bit darker as it goes over towards the cheek. So I just picked up some brown paint and I'm just going to make sure that this kind of blends out and gets a little bit darker as it goes towards the furry part of the of the deer. You could also pick up a little bit of red if you wanted this to look a little bit more on the rosy cheek kind of side. So if you wanted that to happen, you could pick up just a teeny tiny bit of red on your brush and that'll give it like a little bit of a rosy type of look to it. So you can really have fun with that and steer it in whatever direction you want. And then down at the bottom, I'm going to use more brown with, I picked up that skin color plus brown. So it's going to be darker down at the bottom. And I'm going to just make sure that I go right up to where my mouth opening is so there's no unpainted area in through there. And I'm just giving it a little bit more darkness down at the bottom so it looks like it's going under the shadow. You could even, I just picked up a tiny bit of black paint. If you want this to look even more like it's got a little bit more dimension, you can use a little bit of black on your brush just to get it to go a little bit darker down at the bottom. And then in the corners of the mouth, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black paint and just give a little bit of expression. So you can pull these corners out just a little bit. If you want them to kick up, that'll make it look like, you know, he's in the process of saying something or he's happy or whatever the case may be. So you can kick up those corners if you want to and add any little adjusting things that you want. You could add a little bit of pink on if you want that to look like there's lips. So you can really have fun with kind of altering that whatever way that you want. And then we're going to be utilizing our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your uh, small brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step 
is we are going to finish our um, reindeer. We're going to finish the fur and the antlers. I'm going to use my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, my skin color, yellow, and white. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to work from my dark to my light. So I know that I'm going to want a little bit of darkness at, at the fur down in through here. I'm going to want some dark eyebrows and then I'm going to maybe put a couple of dark pieces of fur and then we'll work our way towards the highlighted fur. So I'm going to start with brown and a touch of black on my brush at the same time. So I have both brown and black on my brush. I'm going to start underneath this, um, underneath the face in through here, just putting a real dark, like shadowy type of area underneath here. And then I'm gonna just pull that paint out into these little fluffy pieces as they're gonna be underneath that chin. So this is gonna make it look like it's really nice and dimensional. And I'm gonna give a like a soft line where it meets that chin, just so it doesn't look like two really separate pieces. I'm going to still add a little bit of that brown and black on my brush so I can have a little bit of shadowy area on the exterior part of this face in through here and then kind of just bring some more of that dark fur down in through here. Again, just some brown and black. I really like it nice and dimensional so having, having this darkness down in this area will help to do that. And then you can even add a little bit of the darkness as it's coming up the side of this muzzle, so maybe a little bit more brown as opposed to black, making sure that it kind of um, is fully painted in that vicinity. Just making, I'm going to go in, into my ears, make sure those are nice and dark, and I didn't miss any of that. I'm going to put just black paint on my brush. I didn't wash it, but I picked up black paint. I want some really curious uh, or expressive eyebrows, so I'm going to have them between obviously the eye and the top of the head, but I'm gonna have it kind of in towards here a little bit and just kind of giving myself this really fun curved eyebrow in through there. And then this one's gonna be over in this direction and then just kind of coming out past this eye in through here. And then while I have the brown and the black on my brush, I'm gonna put a couple of dark pieces up it where it meets the antlers. So this way, this will allow us to see these um, dark pieces and see that there is some, um, some length to them. We'll add the light ones on in just a second here, but this helps to sell that story of um, having the, the longer pieces in through there. So that's about all I wanna do for the dark stuff. I'm not gonna wash my brush. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pick up brown plus my skin color. So right now I have brown plus my skin color. And as I do these lighter pieces, I will alternate picking up brown and my skin color. So I started with just, uh, with both of them on my brush, but with my dirty brush, but in a second I might just pick up the brown, oh, and then maybe I'll just pick up the skin color. I'm gonna, whatever I do on the left side, I'm gonna um, attempt to do also on the right side. So just picking up those two colors, brown plus a little bit of the skin color, making sure I have a couple of these cute pieces coming out over in through here. And you can have your reindeer as light or as dark as you want. It's gonna be a visual preference on your part. This time I just picked up the skin color. So this is gonna add um, some little additional vibrant light pieces and I'm pulling this out a little bit farther than the original footprint so that gives you that extra bit of dimension to it. On the sides and down below here I was putting the brush in the direction that I wanted the fur to go. I will do the same thing on the ears and the forehead as well. So I'm going to tackle my ears. Right now I have the brown and the skin color on there and I really just want these to look really fluffy so I'm, I'm just using this nice sketcherly type of brush stroke in the direction that I want that fur to go in, bringing it up in through here and then if I, I'll probably do a little extra bit of a highlight in a minute but right now just getting that exterior fur to make it look like it makes sense with the dark area in the middle. I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the other side. So brown plus my skin color or, or light tan, whatever you wanna to refer to it as, is gonna add this in through here. And again, doing the same thing where I'm adding a little bit um, 
crossing over into the dark area, which is the center of the ear, and that will make it look like it is blending with that dark stuff in inside. I'm going to go ahead and do some on this forehead in through here. So again, just the brown plus a little bit of my skin color. And again, you could certainly at times use more of one or less of the other, whatever you know works for you and is pleasing to your eye. And I'm bringing this up in this direction and across the eyes on like this, just making sure that everything is fully covered. I don't really want to see the blue underneath. So if there's areas where I feel like I need to add more paint to it, like right around these eyes, I'm actually touching my brush a little bit in the black and the brown so I can get um, enough darkness along these eyes so I can't see the blue from the background. So that's another trick if you feel like you're not accomplishing that um, coverage, you can add a touch of the black as well. And then I'm just going to kind of keep adding my lighter tones in through here with my pieces of fur coming out just making sure oops i got it in, in the eye a little bit <laughs> just making sure i've got all of these cute little pieces of fur coming out and you can have them coming in whatever direction you want this is your expressive little reindeer you can make it be more more long hair or shorter hair than I have, it's gonna to be totally up to you. And then I'm just gonna add these really fun longer pieces up towards the top, something like this. And then I'm gonna head on into um, my, my antlers. And I want those to look a little bit different than the fur. So I'm gonna be utilizing a little bit of yellow and white as my highlight color as opposed to the um, as opposed to the tan that we were using here. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to start with um, a little bit of brown on my brush just to give the, the a portion of these a little bit of dark tone so they, oops I just had picked up a little bit of red by accident, um, so I can kind of just give myself a nice full coverage and still have some of that little bit of the darkness in through here and then I'm going to add a, a nice highlight to them. And again this is for a couple purposes, one to make sure that they're fully painted and to to just make sure that I've got some good dimension in it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make myself a light kind of yellowy color. So you can take your skin tone and just add yellow and white to it. So this is going to give you a lighter version with a little bit of a more yellow hue to it. So it'll give you a different highlight tone that you can use for your antlers. And you could also use this for your um, for your ears too if you wanted your ears to look a little bit different. So that's about where I'm going with that. And then I'm really just going to kind of lightly kind of stripe this in or wisp it in so to speak so I can have some nice highlights on here and once I've got it on then I can just blend it in a little bit with um, with my brown so I can just wipe my brush off and while it's wet you can you can blend it in a little bit or you can have it looking like it has those you know um, those lines where one area is almost looks separate from the other so if you don't want to blend it in no worries this is just a fun fun you know little guy I'm going to add that light yellow to the tops of these ears just to give them a little bit more dimension and then we are going to be utilizing this uh, our small brush for the next step so once you've got your cute deer all nice and finished you can put your medium brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the face on Santa. We'll do his beard and his hat for in a future step, but we're going to focus on the facial part and the mouth. I'm going to use my small brush. The colors I'm going to use are black, blue, white, brown, my skin color, and if I use anything else, I'll let you know. So I'm going to tackle it pretty much the same way that I did um, Rudolph's face where we're going to do the eyes first and then we'll just work our way out. So I'm going to put white paint on my brush and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these big um, crescent type of shapes for, at the bottom part of his eyes so it looks like he's looking up at Rudolph's eyes. So I'm going to start over here on this right hand side 
and I'm going to bring this white, this white section down pretty darn far and I'm going to bring it up on the other side pretty darn far. And then I'm just going to color this in with white paint. And again, you can leave a little sliver of that black around the edges. Sometimes that helps to just kind of give a little bit more um, dimension to it, like you're seeing the, the dark parts on the sides of the eyes. So if you feel that that works for you, feel free to leave it. And I'm just going to kind of bring this all the way down to the cheek in through here because the cheek in essence is going to be sitting in front of the eye a little bit because he's got some big cute jolly cheeks so that's going to be that one I'm going to go ahead and do the other one and just try and do something similar on the other side so this comes about up to here going to bring this down in through here and over right about here works for me and then again just painting the whole thing and you can certainly make you know adjust these to to look a, a different way if you want yours to look different than mine you can certainly make yours bigger or smaller or maybe you put some glasses on them or maybe he's looking off in that direction <laughs> wherever you want him to look just put the white part of the eye in the opposing direction and then you can turn those eyes whatever way that you want I just slow down a little bit so I can get this um, this shape the way that I want. And once I've got those on there, I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna uh, pick up blue and white, the cobalt blue, the, bright, uh, the original blue, plus a little bit of white. That's what's gonna give me the colored part of his eye. I'm gonna leave a little pupil part up at the top, which is gonna be black. So I'm just gonna take this and just kind of reserve a little bit of that area up top going to do the same thing on this side just so I've got it in my head and I can do them kind of similarly and then I'm just going to paint this area in with my blue and white on my brush at the same time so I like utilizing the multiple colors on my brush at the same time especially when I'm doing eyes because that really helps to put the um the different tones or the different colors within the color part of the eye that those little speckles and and you know vibrant little shifts in the color that you that we see so something like this and of course you can make yours lighter or darker whatever works for you maybe your Santa has green eyes instead of instead of blue eyes and then once you've got it again it will probably turn a little darker as it dries um, and if you want to change you know make adjustments feel free to do so I'm washing dry my brush and I'm putting white paint on to give myself some little sparkles at the top so I'm gonna do kind of a, a sideways little dash and then a dot and then I'll do something similar on the other eye so a little sideways dash and a dot and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and of course you can make any little adjustments to that as you see fit I'm gonna put some brown paint on my brush to give myself a little kind of sketch of where I want all of my contour kind of areas to be which is going to be my shadowy areas so I put a little bit of brown paint on my brush I definitely want to make sure that I have some darkness in um, in these corners of the the nose where it meets the eye so just a little bit of brown paint will help to to get this darkness on in through here it also help to erase any of your little pencil marks that you have I also want to give a little kind of um, dark area where the the top the round part of the nose kind of meets those nostrils so just again just a teeny tiny bit of brown paint on my brush is going to give me those little those little markers that I want I also want to make a little separating area between the full nose and the cheeks so I'm just kind of using a little bit of brown on my brush to make sure that those are separated we'll add we'll make sure that this is all blended in in a minute but this is just going to get the party started I'm also going to give um, Santa a couple of wrinkles so I'm just going to pull out a couple of little brown um, streaks out those corners of the eyes so just putting the brown on in through here and then just pulling out a couple of little streaks I also want to put some shadow up underneath the hat so I just have brown on my brush right now and I'm just rubbing it up underneath that hat 
I'm also going to put it on the sides of the face, so where it meets, oops, that's a little bit too much on my brush, where it meets the um, beard, I'm just rubbing in some brown paint in through here, and I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. So just a little bit of brown paint on my brush, rubbing it up into the um, where it meets the hat. We can lighten that up in a minute. If you make it too dark, I'm going to be putting that skin color on anyways in a minute for the highlights, but this is just going to give us that little shadowy part and I just kind of blend it into this side of the face. So that tells us where all the shadowy parts are going to be. We'll put eyebrows on later too, but now that we've got that on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start picking up my skin color to make sure I didn't wash my brush. I'm just putting the skin color, putting a second layer of the skin color on to make sure that I have full coverage everywhere and I'm bringing it right to the edges. When I get to those shadowy areas, if it's not blending in the way that I want, I'll pick up more of the brown with the skin color. So right now I have brown plus my skin color. So as it's getting up into those shadowy areas, if I feel it's not blending in well enough, you can pick up both of the colors at the same time. So again, just my skin color is, I'm doing a second coat of my skin color on the whole face. Um, and where it's meeting the shadowy areas, I just make sure that I get it to blend in. So again, I'm just picking up a little bit of um, brown to get it to blend in into those shadowy areas. So something like that. The second coat is going to make it look a lot more natural than if you just did one, one coat. And I'm going to put some little highlights on the cheeks in a second and the cheeks and the nose but right now I'm just concentrating on getting this second coat of the skin color on so that way we we make sure that we've got all areas nice and covered and we don't have to worry about any any unpainted areas and of course the paint will be more vibrant and have a lot more life to it if you have more than one layer on it so I just kind of keep building the skin tone uh, as I'm going through the, the face in through here, I'm going to add, like I said, little highlights in a minute, but just making sure that I've got my, my regular coat fully on before I do that. So that's looking pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up white. White can be your highlight color, but you can also make the skin color a little bit lighter and pinker if you wanted to. So you could take your skin color and add white with a touch of red to it. And what that'll do is that'll put a little bit more rosy pinkiness into it. So you can do that and you can do it with, you know, just white could be your highlight color, wherever your comfort zone is. But I'm making myself a little lighter, rosier kind of pinky color for my highlight. And then I'm gonna utilize that on the tip of my nose. I'll utilize it on my cheeks, on my little nostrils. And what this does is it's just gonna bring his, bring him right to life. He'll be even more brought to life when we put eyebrows on him. But <laughs> right now, this is just gonna kind of bring this nose into a cute button place. And to get it to blend in with my skin tone, you just pick back up that skin tone, uh, the original skin tone to get it to blend in. So these little light areas are going to make the cheeks pop out, make them look all nice and um, plump and full of full of cookies I guess Santa eats a lot of cookies so his face is going to be nice and nice and full so you can certainly continue to work on this as much as you want to once you feel that you've got it as um, plump as you want and as e exciting as you want we are going to be oh I need to do the lip too hold on one second let me let me just get these cheeks. The cheeks get me all excited because when I start doing these highlights and shadows, I it all just starts to come to life and I sometimes forget what I'm supposed to be doing next. <laughs> so I think I've got to do the lip next. So he has somewhere to say ho, ho, ho from. Mm, that's looking cute. And so what I'm going to do for the um, lip, if I can ever stop doing my, my little cheeks in through here. And you'll have some um, of the the facial hair too in these areas as well that can help to hide any little edges that might not be fully painted. So all I'm really going to do for the mouth, I'm going to add some brown paint down at the bottom portion of the mouth. So something like this, I just added brown paint. This is going to be um, 
leading you into the mouth so it's not too too dark it doesn't need to be totally black inside the mouth and if you can see chalk marks right now just let it let it go so once I've got black or brown on there I'm picking up red and brown and white all at the same time so I just picked I dotted my brush in red I dotted it in brown and I dotted it in white. I don't need a lot of paint on my brush, so I'm going to take those three colors and just kind of wipe it off on my paper towel. This is what I'm gonna use for his lip. Even if that brown is still wet underneath there, that's okay. I'm gonna put it a little bit away from the bottom and I'm just gonna give Santa this really cute lip. I don't necessarily want it to go too, too red, which is why I'm choosing to use those other colors on my brush as well. If you want yours to go redder, pick up more red. I do want to give it a little highlight, so I'm picking up white on my dirty brush and just giving myself a little bit of a highlight. And you can keep fiddling with that as much as you want. And then we're going to be utilizing our medium brush. For the next step so make any little adjusting tweaks that you want and put and when you're done you can put this small brush away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we are going to finish our hat and our hair on santa i'm going to be using my medium brush the colors i'm going to use are gray white black brown and red. And how I'm going to do this is I am going to start with my facial hair and then we'll work our way up. So he doesn't have eyebrows right now and I'd really like him to have eyebrows. <laughs> I'm going to put some gray paint on my brush and I'm going to dot in with the gray paint where I want the eyebrows to be. So I'm just going to give him these, these little fluffy eyebrows really kind of close to the hat and they're just going to kind of come down over in this direction and I'm just dotting. I don't need to do anything more than just give this little insinuation of these fluffy eyebrows. I'll put white on them in a minute but right now I just want to give um, the base coat with the with the gray paint. I'm going to do the same thing over on this eyebrow over in through here and they don't even have to be exactly the same shape and this one might go up underneath the it's this one's going up underneath the hat a little bit too and that's going to make it look really cute too like his hat is all saggy and and on top of his eyebrow a little bit yeah that looks super cute um and then what i'm going to do while that's drying is i'm going to pick up some brown paint on my dirty brush so i have gray plus brown what i'm going to do is i'm going to give myself these contour like these waves in the beard and the mustache I want to break up where the mustache is to the actual beard itself. So over here on the left hand side of the mustache, I'm going to bring this, I think I want a little bit more brown. I just picked up a little bit more brown. So this is going to set, it's going to bring the mustache out a little bit more because I'm putting this darkness from the, um, with the brown alongside of it. So that way when we go to put the, the mustache hair on there you'll be able to see it much better because it's got this brown next to it and i'm putting some down in through here I'm just picking up brown at this point I, th I think it was a little bit too light with the brown and gray i'm going to put a little bit of darkness underneath these underneath the lip and just pull it in a curved direction so it starts the curve of the hair coming down that beard i'm also going to give a little bit of curve down in these um, these areas here. I'm gonna put a little bit of darkness right underneath the hat so that looks like it's maybe shadowed a little bit and then start to bring down with the brown paint. I'm not using a lot on my brush but enough where I can really give some little wavy look to some of these pieces of, of the um, hair. And again, just putting some brown up there. You could even use a little bit of black if you felt that you wanted that extra bit of um of darkness into it and the extra bit of um deep shadows within it but this is working out well for me giving me this nice kind of curve i can give that the insinuation of the curvy pieces and then i did not do it on the on the mustache because i know that that i want to be nice and bright so i'm picking up some white paint right now without washing my brush and i'm going to tap in a little highlight 
um, my eyebrows. So I'm not covering up all the gray, just adding a bit more uh, or a bit of a highlight with the white paint so we can have some um, brighter pieces of the eyebrows, something like that. Now I'm just gonna be picking up white paint without washing my brush. I'm gonna do the under um, hair first and I'll come back and do the mustache last. So I've got just white paint on my brush and I'm just going to lightly just kind of add in some white pieces. And you can certainly, if the white is too white for you and you want it to work its way into the gray, pick up some gray with the white like I just did. And that's going to, again, give you more dimension because it's gonna allow this hair underneath to look darker than the white hair that you're gonna put on the exterior. So it's all just part of an illusion that you're creating. And if you start all white, you can't really get brighter than that. So if you want there to be some white with dimension in it, you've gotta utilize other colors with it. So right now I'm picking up white plus gray in order to get some of these under um, pieces that are below my my mustache because that's the part that I feel is going to be the part that pops out the most and these ones again I'm, I'm doing with curves so it gives the impression of movement in um, in the beard and again gray plus white is where I'm headed I'm putting a couple pieces in through here and just working them on top of the brown so the brown doesn't look like it's all by itself and then maybe just putting a couple of the bright pieces towards those edges and then I'll, I'll work on the mustache in a second but you can see I'm really just having a whole bunch of fun here now I'm gonna go in for my mustache and as I'm doing this mustache I'm gonna bring some pieces down past my mouth a little bit and I'm gonna have them in these little kind of curves so it's gonna give it that um, authentic kind of wispy look at the bottom and then I'm gonna just get these to kind of overlap the darker the darker pieces of the beard along the edges so that way you can really you can really see the difference between the the mustache and the beard and as I'm doing this as it's going towards the face you can certainly you know, if you've got some edges that looked like they were unfinished, just bring a couple pieces of the beard or the mustache in front of them. And then I'm just gonna kind of keep layering this. And again, if it goes too white on you, feel free to bring some of that gray back and just kind of build it until it feels nice and natural. I'm gonna put a couple little pieces up in front of this nose. So it looks like he hasn't, he's been too busy with all of his deliveries and his his tasks. He hasn't he hasn't cut his beard lately. So he's gonna have this, these wild little pieces around, around the edges. And of course you can make yours as fun and as wild as you want. And I just kind of keep building it until I feel like it is, it's fun and it's got as much talking, uh, you know, it's saying as much as I want it to, maybe a couple pieces kind of flipping up over on these edges. Oh uh, yeah, that looks super cute. Maybe a couple more in through here and then just making sure that I've got everything covered and it looks the way that I want it to. And of course you can certainly keep fiddling with yours as much as you want. I'm gonna move on to the hat. So since I've got um, the grays on my Actually, no, I'm gonna go for the red part first. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna do my red part first. So I'm gonna start with red and black on my brush at the same time. And I'm gonna do the shadowy part. So this is gonna be the part that is right next to the, um, the rim of the hat. So again, just red and black. And I'm just kind of dotting it in here so it looks nice and nice and ruffled. I think I need a little bit more black on my brush. There we go. We're just my, making it um, nice and dark so it looks like there's some kind of shadow. And then I'll put a little bit on this underside in through here. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to wipe my brush off and pick up a red paint and just do another kind of um, stippled type of layer where I'm just applying the red with these dots so it looks nice and fluffy and has a little bit of texture and dimension to it and then once I've got the entire area covered with this full layer of red I will add a touch of white to my brush and do little bits of highlights on the pieces of the 
hat that I feel I want to pop out a little bit. So that's my that's my coat with the, the red and the black. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of white paint and I feel like I wanna have this part pretty light and maybe this part in through here pretty light. So my red is still wet, which is great because I can just kind of tap these two together to give them a little bit of a blend, not a lot, but enough to just get them to work their way into each other and make it look like kind of a natural progression from the light to the dark. And then what I'll do once I've got that on there, I'm going to uh, wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna work on the gray areas. So wash and dry my brush, at, well, the white areas, <laughs> they're gray right now, but they're gonna be white in a minute. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start dark at the bottom and then work my way to the light. So I'm gonna put brown, black, and white on my brush at the same time. So I just really just dotted in brown, black, and white. I don't need a lot, but enough to just give me a little bit of a, um, of a darker tone down at the bottom. And then I'm just gonna kinda tap it in at the bottom, I think I want a little more black on my brush, there we go, and just give myself a little bit darker of a look down at the bottom of this hat, just along this edge, so it looks like it's just kind of dipping down a little bit, something like that. And now I'm, without washing my brush, I'm just gonna pick up white paint and work my way up that hat. So by the time I get to the top, or um, nearing the middle or the top, I will be getting lighter and lighter. And I really just want this to look like it's a fluffy part to the hat. I don't need it to um, look smooth or anything like that. I'm just continuing to give it this, this bright fluffiness um, so it looks like it's keeping him warm and it's got some kind of dimension to it. And then I'm just gonna kind of keep tapping this right along the top, keeping it a nice unevenness to it so it gives that authentic kind of crimply type of look to it. And then I'll do the same thing for the little pom-pom at the top. And I'm almost done with this. You could certainly use your larger bristle brush to do this. I, I often will use the bristle brush to put these textural elements in, um, in fabric like this. So you could certainly accomplish the same thing with your um, bristle brush. This was just a smaller area and I thought it would be kind of little simpler. So I just picked up my black, brown, and white to start the bottom of this pom-pom. And then once I've got that bottom part on, I'm just going to start picking up white and work my way towards, towards the top. So just white paint, get it to blend in a little bit, and then I will get the, the edges to be really nice and messy so it'll look like it's all fluffed out from the cold weather or from the movement or from being hanging upside down like it is right, in, right now. And then you can fiddle with yours all you want. And when you feel like you're all nice and done, we are going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step. So get all your highlights and shadows on your Santa and then you can put this medium brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm going bottom left on this one. I'm going with my small brush, black paint. I sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you want for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. It's your painting, you get to sign it however you would like. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really fun and whimsical Christmas image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.